Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 63. In this video, we will discuss the commonly used Snyder notation for solving a Sudoku puzzle. This video will have two parts. The first part, we will begin to solve a puzzle using Snyder notation. And in the second part, we will begin to solve the same puzzle without using Snyder notation. This will give you the opportunity to compare and contrast the two puzzle solving strategies. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. The basic gist of using Snyder notation is it is a guideline for how you place pencil marks in a Sudoku puzzle. Before we begin talking about the notation, let's do a quick review on what is a pencil mark. To explain what is a pencil mark, we will concentrate on cell 3, 6, now outlined in black. Every cell in a Sudoku puzzle shares the intersection with three different houses. If you are not sure what a Sudoku house is, take a look at DX Sudoku training video number 40. Also, if you're not sure what a Sudoku given or a Sudoku value is, they are also explained in Sudoku training video number 40. We are now showing the three intersecting houses with cell 3, 6 all highlighted in light green. The way to determine what pencil marks go into a cell is by excluding any given or value already set in the three shared houses. Here are the pencil marks we can put into cell 3, 6. Usually, pencil marks are shown with a smaller font than the one used for givens and values. The reason we put the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 9 as pencil marks is because those numbers do not already exist in the three shared houses. In the house making up row 3, there is a 6 and an 8. This means there cannot be a 6 or 8 in cell 3, 6. This is because the most basic Sudoku rule is there can only be one of each number in each house. In the house making up column 6, there is a 2, 7, and an 8. This means there cannot be a 2, 7, or 8 in cell 3, 6. And the house making up block 2, there's a 2, a 4, and a 7. This means there cannot be a 2, 4, or 7 in cell 3, 6. The numbers 1, 3, 5, and 9 are the remaining numbers of 1 through 9 not used in the other shared houses. So this is why we put the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 9 in cell 3, 6 as pencil marks. Sometimes, instead of calling the tiny numbers a cell could possibly be pencil marks, some Sudoku software uses the terminology possible candidates or just candidates. Try not to get hung up on the terminology. What is important is the idea of what can go into a cell is based on the three shared houses. Now that you understand pencil marks, we reset our current puzzle. Snyder notation will be explained by an example of its use. We begin by showing all the cells having a given or a value of 1 outlined in black. In this example, there is only one cell, 8, 2, which has a 1 as a given. For cell 8, 2, we highlight all the cells in the three shared houses in light red. This means any cell with a light red background cannot have a pencil mark for the number 1. Consequently, we highlight all the cells in gray where the number 1 pencil mark can be placed. At this point, we do not fill in all the pencil marks in every cell highlighted in gray. Based on the Snyder notation guidelines, we only put pencil marks in 3x3 three three blocks having only two cells highlighted in gray. We work our way through all the blocks. When we get to block 4, we have two cells highlighted in gray. So for this block, we fill in the pencil marks for the possible 1 candidate in the cells as shown. We continue searching with the other blocks. We do not find any other blocks having exactly two gray cells. Before we move on to the number two, notice the two pencil marks in block four create a set of block candidates now outlined. If you are unfamiliar with the Sudoku concept of lock candidates, refer to DX Sudoku training video number 40 titled Beginner's Guide. Because of these locked candidates, we expand the number of cells that cannot have one as a pencil mark. We highlight additional cells in red that can no longer have a one as a pencil mark. We examine block one again after this change, but since it still has more than two gray cells highlighted, we do not add any additional pencil marks for the number one. We move to the number two. 
all the cells having a 2 as a given or a value are now outlined in black. Based on the cells outlined, all the cells that cannot have 2 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in red. Consequently, all the cells where 2 as a pencil mark can be placed are now highlighted in gray. Block 3 and Block 5 have exactly two cells highlighted in gray. We are now showing Block 3 and Block 5 having pencil marks for the number 2. Next, we work on the number 3. All the cells having a 3 as a given or a value are now outlined in black. Based on the cells that are outlined, all the cells that cannot have 3 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in red. Consequently, all the cells that can have a 3 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in gray. Block 1 and Block 9 have exactly two cells highlighted in gray. We are now showing Block 1 and Block 9 having pencil marks for the number 3. The number 4 is next. All the cells having a 4 as a given or a value are now outlined in black. Based on the cells outlined, all the cells that cannot have 4 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in red. Consequently, all the cells that can have a 4 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in gray. Since there is only one gray cell in block 5, this is essentially a naked single. We choose the value 4 for cell 4, 6 and update our cell coloring. For information on naked singles, see DX Sudoku training video number 40 titled Beginner's Guide. Block 6 and Block 7 have exactly two cells highlighted in gray. We are now showing Block 6 and Block 7 having pencil marks for the number 4. Notice the two cells in Block 7 having number 4 pencil marks form a set of lock candidates now outlined. This set of lock candidates in Block 7 reduces the number of gray cells in Block 9 down to 2. Consequently, we add pencil marks for the number 4 in Block 9 as shown. Next, all the cells having a 5 as a given or as a value are now outlined in black. Based on the cells that are outlined, all the cells that cannot have a 5 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in red. Consequently, all the cells that can have a 5 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in gray. Block 3 and block 4 have exactly two cells highlighted in gray. We are now showing block 3 and block 4 having pencil marks for the number 5. Notice the two cells in block 4 form a set of lock candidates along row 6. We update the cells where we can't put the pencil mark for the 5 because of the lock candidates. Since block 5 now has only two cells in gray, we fill in the pencil marks for the number 5. We move on to the number 6. All the cells having a 6 as a given or a value are now outlined. Based on the cells that are outlined, all the cells that cannot have a 6 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in red. Consequently, all the cells that can have a 6 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in gray. Only block 4 has exactly two cells highlighted in gray. We fill in the pencil marks in the two cells in block 4 with the number 6. These two cells in block 4, now having pencil marks for the number 6, form a set of lock candidates. The lock candidates in block 4 allow us to fill in the pencil marks for the number 6 in block 1. Next, consider the numbers 2 and 5 set as givens in block 6, now outlined. Also, consider the house making up row 4, also now outlined. Since the numbers 2 and 5 are already set in block 6, the two cells 4, 4 and 4, 5 form a naked pair with the numbers 2 and 5 now highlighted in green. For more information on naked pairs, see DX Sudoku training video number 40 titled Beginner's Guide. Since there has to be at least one number 6 in the house making up row 4, and there are only two remaining gray cells in the row, we fill in the pencil marks for the number 6. The two cells in row 4 having a pencil mark for the number 6 form a set of lock candidates. The other gray cells in block 6 can be converted to red. We are now ready to work on the 7s. All the cells having a 7 as a given or value are now outlined. Based on the cells that are outlined, all the cells that cannot have a 7 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in red. 
Consequently, all the cells that can have a 7 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in gray. Block 5 and block 7 have exactly two cells highlighted in gray. We are now showing block 5 and block 7 having pencil marks for the number 7. The two pencil marks for the 7s in block 7 form a set of lock candidates. This means we can convert the cells from gray to red in block 9. Since block 9 only has two cells in gray, we fill in the pencil marks for the 7. The number 8 is next. All the cells having an 8 as a given or a value are now outlined. Based on the cells that are outlined, all the cells that cannot have an 8 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in red. Consequently, all the cells that can have an 8 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in gray. Block 2 and Block 6 have exactly two cells highlighted in gray. We are now showing Block 2 and Block 6 having pencil marks for the number 8. The two pencil marks in Block 2 form a set of lock candidates. This means we can convert the cells from gray to red in Block 8. Since Block 8 now only has two cells in gray, we can fill in the pencil marks for the number 8. All we have left is the number 9. All the cells having a 9 as a given or a value are now outlined. Based on the cells that are outlined, all the cells that cannot have a 9 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in red. Consequently, all the cells that can have a 9 as a pencil mark are now highlighted in gray. There are no 3x3 three three blocks having only two cells outlined in gray. However, before we give up on the number 9, Let's concentrate on the house making up row 4 now outlined. As you may recall, we have a naked pair in the row 4 now highlighted in green. Because of this naked pair, the house making up row 4 only has two gray cells where a 9 pencil mark can go. We fill in the pencil mark for the number 9. Notice, because of the 6 and 9 in column 8 now outlined, we have another naked pair in row 4 now highlighted in purple. We now have two sets of naked pairs in the house making up row 4. Take a closer look at the cell 4, 8. For the house making up row 4, this cell only has one remaining possible pencil mark we can place in this cell, which is the number 1. We have found a naked single. We choose the value 1 for the cell. We cannot go any further with Snyder notation in solving this puzzle. So at this point, we would start filling in additional pencil marks. By filling in additional pencil marks, we look for naked singles, hidden singles, naked pairs, hidden pairs, or some other puzzle solving technique to make further progress with the puzzle. Next, we are going to do a much shorter demonstration of solving this same puzzle, but without using Snyder notation. Next, we are going to use a completely different puzzle solving strategy that does not use or require Snyder notation. With this approach, we are taking advantage of features found in modern Sudoku software. We let our Sudoku software fill in all the pencil marks or possible candidates for us. Both strategies use the same puzzle solving techniques. Here is our original puzzle loaded into Hudoku. As you can see, Hudoku fills in all the pencil marks for us automatically by default. The first thing we do is look for naked singles. We do not find any naked singles. We start looking for hidden singles. All the cells having a possible one candidate are now highlighted in green. We do not find any hidden singles. All the cells having a possible two candidate are now highlighted in green. We do not find any hidden singles. All the cells having a possible three candidate are now highlighted in green. Again, we do not find any hidden singles. All the cells having a possible 4 candidate are now highlighted in green. This time we do find a hidden single in block 5. We choose the value 4 for cell 4, 6, and now a naked single pops up in cell 4, 8. We choose the value 1 for cell 4, 8, and a new naked single pops up in cell 1, 8. We choose the value 4 for cell 1, 8, and a new hidden single pops up in cell 5, 9. We choose the value 4 for cell 5, 9, and another hidden single pops up in cell 8, 7. We choose the value 4 for cell 8, 7. This is as far as we are going to go solving this puzzle. Next, we are going to compare the two experiences with and without using Snyder notation. So let's compare using Snyder notation versus not using Snyder notation. Snyder notation took a really long time. Filling out pencil marks is a long and tedious process. 
but it is nice only to show a limited number of pencil marks, and Snyder notation has been very popular for a very long time. The modern software approach is new to many people. With Hadoku, we were able to have five values set in a fraction of the time. Hadoku took away the human drudgery of filling in and managing pencil marks, and when using this approach, solving a puzzle is just as satisfying. So I do have a little bit of a personal bias here, but generally I prefer using the modern software approach. For me, it is just a better overall experience. This completes DxHadoku training video number 63. Please support DxHadoku. Thank you for watching.